Let's get a pup. The end of Kate's bed was a lonely place. Tiger the cat no longer slept there. Tiger died last winter, so there were only Kate's two feet to keep each other company. Now Kate woke to a full summer with the sun pouring over the back fence. Let's get a pup, said Kate. What, a brand new one, said a now wide awake mum. With the wrapping still on, added her breathless dad. Pups don't come wrapped, replied Kate. I know they don't, said dad. It's just a joke. Mum looked in the paper. It must be small, said Kate. And cute, said dad. And get all excited, said Kate. And run around in circles, said dad. Hmm, said Mum. Look! The rescue centre. The centre for dogs without a home. The centre for dogs all alone. With their breakfast uneaten, they dressed and left immediately. At the rescue centre, they found plenty of dogs without a home. And lots of dogs all alone. They found big dogs, small dogs, sniffers and sleepers, wired haired, short haired, scratchers and leapers. They found fighters and biters, growlers and snarlers, short dogs, long and thin dogs, and dogs with their cheeks sucked in. They also found happy dogs, sad dogs, take me dogs, and dogs who couldn't care less. They saw smelly dogs, fat dogs, lean and mean dogs, chew it up and spit it out at you dogs, and dogs like walking nightmares. Then they saw Dave. Dave was so excited, he came out sideways. He barked twice, water flew off his tongue, and he turned a complete circle in the air. He was small, he was cute, he was brand new. Dave climbed right over the top of Kate, who briefly wore him like a hat. He's all that we want, said Kate. All that we came for, said Mum. We'll take him, said Dad. Then they saw Rosie. And she saw them. She was old and grey and as broad as a table. It was difficult for her to get to her feet. But she stood, it seemed, almost politely. Her eyes watered, her ears went back and she radiated good intention. My wish for you, said Dad, is that you could lie on someone's living room floor. Or on their couch, said Mum. Or on someone's bed, said Kate. Mum's voice shook. We would take them all if we could, but what can we do? And with many a backward glance, they slowly walked away. At home, Dave was everything that a pup could be, and more. On his first night, he cried in his carton. The next morning, Kate's mum and dad received a good licking. Dave was crying last night, so he slept with me, said Kate, but I didn't sleep. Neither did I, said Dad, I was wishing. Neither did I, said Mum, I was wishing. With their breakfasts once again uneaten, they dressed and left immediately. At the rescue centre, Rosie was waiting for them. Let's get you home, said Dad. Rosie was instantly at home. Her broad, heavy tail swept everything off the low table. I've seen a dog smelling a man, but never a man smelling a dog, said Kate's mum. She needs a bath, said Dad. Now Dad's wish has come true. Rosie is asleep on the living room floor, with Dave to keep her company. Mum's wish has also come true. Now Rosie and Dave are asleep on the couch. And what of Kate's wish? Will it come true as well? Yes, Dave and Rosie will get to sleep on someone's bed. Kate puts her head on Rosie's stomach. She hears angry gurgles, squeaks and plops, lonely corkscrew sounds and the pump 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 of Rosie's heart like a big hollow engine room. 
Kate's feet are no longer lonely under the blankets. It seems like Dave and Rosie have always been there. Their weight is comfortable and reliable, and will stop Kate's bed floating away into the night.